Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the author of Hibernate Made Easy, the webmaster of hibernatemadeeasy.com, and I'm also the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com, and I wanted to take you through a little tutorial that was posted on the website the other day about setting up and configuring a Spring environment. So if you actually want to start working with Spring, the first thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go down to this website. That's springsource.com slash download slash community. When you get there, you'll probably get some sort of a nag screen that asks you for your username and information about registering. Uh, you can either accept that or decline to fill that out um, after you get by that nag screen though you'll see something like this and you'll see a list of different resources that you can download and what I want you to download is the latest GA release of Spring. Uh, Spring 3.002 is what's available right now and specifically you're going to need to download two folders. You're going to need to download the release file which is about 21 megs in size and the dependencies folder, which is 155.7 megs in size. Those are the ones that we're going to need to download in order to get the binary bytecode goodness of Spring. Now with those two files downloaded, I've actually downloaded them and put them into my downloads folder so you can see their basic size right there. You want to actually extract them and I've opened them up in WinZip and I've extracted them. I extracted actually the framework release one just to the root of C right there. The other one I actually extracted to a folder I created called Spring Dependencies and I did that because all of the content that's in this folder is actually just sort of packaged all willy-nilly. Um, so you want to know where you're exporting those particular files to. But once you get those ex once you get those files downloaded and you get them extracted to your file system, you'll end up seeing a couple of folders that look like that. There's Spring dependencies off my C drive. There's the Spring framework release off my C drive. There's a couple of things you're going to need to do here now. Inside the Spring release, we've got all of the different jar files that we need to link to at runtime from our JDK, and I'm really hoping you've got a JDK installed. And so what we want, I want to do is create a folder, and I'm going to call it sp springlib, underscore springlib. So I'm going to create a folder, let's see if I can refresh that, called underscore springlib, in which I'm going to put all of the required files from the Spring Framework. Now what does that include? Well under the Framework Release, if you dig in here you'll see a distribution folder. I'm going to copy all of the bytecode goodness that's in there and throw it into the Springlib folder. And obviously I didn't copy and paste hard enough there, so copy and paste. And that gets all of the basic goodness in there so you can see the Spring Framework core and Framework Beans, aspects for aspect J, transaction stuff, all sorts of good stuff. Now there's another couple of folders that I need to grab and see if I can find it here. There it is. It's the projects spring build lib IV folder under the framework release and it's got the IV jar and common logging and a couple of other things in there. I'm actually just going to copy all of the files in that folder and throw them as well into Springlib. And now this is looking very handsome with all of the different jar files that I need. Now the thing is there's actually one more jar file that I'm going to need. There's the old Spring Dependencies folder and what is it? It's the cglib which is under net.sourceforge no not net.sourceforge is it under net.sourceforge? Oh, there it is, yeah. It's that springsource.net.sf.cglib jar file right there. I need to copy that one as well from spring dependencies and then you can actually see the whole list there that's the folder structure of where it can be found. Now I need to take that, copy it, and chuck it right there into that springlib folder. And I got a lot of files in here, but you can see that one there is the cglib. These ones here 
are all from the distribution, DIST folder, and these ones here are all from that Ivy folder. Okay, now that's all of the different jar files that I currently need in order to get a little standalone Spring application to work. And so the next thing to do is actually create a standalone Spring application. So I'm going to create a, a folder called underscore my code under which I'm going to put my code. I'm going to spell it correctly because that's how I roll. And I'm going to create a little bit of a folder structure on there. I'm going to have a folder named com, folder called McKenzie, and a folder named, wait for it, spring. And in that spring folder, I'm going to create a new Java file called the bill runner. So I'm going to create a little application in the future that's going to charge people for using bandwidth on their cloud applications. And the bill runner will be that central class for figuring out those bills. Now, on the actual tutorial on the serverside.com, you can actually copy the code that's required here. And that's what I'm going to do because I'm lazy. And there's the code right there. It uh, looks like the package statement is reversed a little bit. so. I'll tidy that up, maybe even do some formatting here. But what am I doing here? Well, the key right here is I'm going to create a little class that has a runnable main method. And inside this class, I'm going to reference and create one of the most important spring classes that there is. And then I'm going to run it and just print out its two string method. So you can see a little printout on the object that I create called context. That's a huge line of code here. It's the annotation config application context. You need to have the import statement as well. I'll scroll over so you can see that whole thing up there. But if I can actually compile this code, then my development environment, my design time environment, is properly linking to those Spring jar files. And if I can run this, and that context gets printed out and it's not null, um, well, then, in fact, I've created a runtime environment, a standalone application that can actually reference and use the Spring environment. If I can get that all working, then I'm going to be pretty happy. So how am I going to tell if that's working? Well, I'm going to save that. So save my bill runner. It is now saved inside that mycode.com McKenzie Spring folder. And now I'm actually going to bring out the DOS prompt, go to the mycode folder, and I'm telling you, I'm old school. I am going to run a little command that will compile. So I'm calling the Java C compiler, which is in the bin directory of my JDK installation. I'm going to include on the class path everything in that springlib folder. So springlib slash star, you can see that right there. And specifically, what I'm going to compile, I'm going to compile, well, everything that ends with .java in the mycode.com McKenzie Spring course. So I did that. I hit enter. You can see that no compile errors got printed out there. I can even go back to this folder. You can see that a Java class was created. So the compilation was successful. The last thing I need to do now is just run that code. And here I go. Edit. Paste. And you can see now, just a little bit different, I'm calling, I'm including the class path, everything in that springlib folder. Um, I'm also including my code on my class path, and I reference the file as com.mckenzie.spring.buildrunner, as opposed to just kind of dos slashes up there. But when I run it, I'll run it again, because I can't get too much of it. I get the two string of the context object printed out. You can actually see it's a little hash code right there. You can say that it's printed out. I get all this other information. I have no idea what it means, but I know what it's telling me. And it's telling me that I have got my Spring Framework configured properly, and I can run applications that leverage the Spring Framework, that reference classes in the Spring, Spring Framework, and can use the dependency injection and inversion of control attributes of the Spring container. And so, I got to tell you, with all of that, I am 
pretty happy and everything looks good. Okay, and that's it for now. As I said, head over to the serverside.com, uh, take a look at that tutorial, and also head over to uh, hibernbook.com and hibernatemadeeasy.com. Check out some of the Hibernate tutorials there and feel free to pick up a copy of my book. But for now, have a lot of fun working with Spring.